Hey everyone, aloha. So you know that we work remote and we use cellular as our main connection uh, to work remote. We also use sometimes uh, camp Wi-Fi and we've done that, but we're getting ready to change that up. Stay tuned and you'll find out exactly what we're doing. So here's what we're doing. We got Starlink. And this box has not yet been opened and we're gonna open it right here in front of you. Um, come what may, we have no idea what's inside. We know that there's a, a square thing and something else that we gotta plug in and a couple to electric and a couple other things. And I'm just being silly. So let's get to it. We're gonna unload. All right, there's one. And I think there's another one over here. Yes, there is. There's one on the long side too. Sherry is my camera person. Oh, okay. So here we go. You guys get the first look. Voila, there's a big, f big square thing. Okay, so this is the dish. Looks like we have some instructions to get started. And This, I believe, is the router, which we are not going to have to use because we have something else. Some cable, lots of cable there. And this looks like it is, I wanna say it's the power supply, but let me take it apart here and is there supposed to be a place to plug it in? Oh, there is. Okay. Well, not sure exactly how this all goes together, but we will figure it out. Hmm. Okay, so according to the diagram, It looks like, oh, that might just be to power the router. Okay, so there was a a misconception or something that I did not understand and, and uh, I don't know that I have the wrong one but from what I understood is that the newer units did not come with a router and that this cable here which plugs into the antenna also plugged into the power supply and then from the power supply you could run Ethernet directly into what we're going to connect this to is the Peplake router. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case with the unit that we got so we will have to run it like it is um, from the antenna, which I'm gonna set out over here into the router. And then the router will get a power supply. Now this guy plugs right into here and I can see how it goes. 
So I just push that in. And it's connected. And I've already picked a spot for us at our campsite here. It should be right over here. And there's lots of cable. <clears throat> and for now, we're just gonna run this through the door until we figure out where to run it through. I happen to know that we can run cables through here because I've done it before. Okay, so there's all the cable we got. Um, oh, lights, no way. What's that? That's the pen plate rudder. Is that where you're gonna plug it in it? Not that. I have to plug it into the Starlink router right here. So that big long cable is going to get plugged into here. So we're going to take in, plug this cable into the router, which is right here. So what I figured out is that both of these ends are the same and they're fully interchangeable. So it doesn't matter which end you have it in, um, they both work. Okay, that's what I was looking for. So that's the LAN connection. So they've changed things up a little bit it seems. I'll need to plug it in, the power supply. <clears throat> and that should just plug into here. And all we got to do now is set it up. Um, I got to go through the setup process. And once I do that, I'll get back with you and we'll see how that works. So once you've downloaded the app, it's going to take you to here. Um, you select your, we got, we're selecting the standard one that, like we got over there. And I'm going to confirm. And it wants me to orient it. Find a clear view of the sky. Your Starlink will need to be outdoors with a completely clear view of the sky to stay connected to satellites. Once Starlink gets online, we'll guide you to align it later if needed. Okay. So... I've already checked for obstructions. There are some, but this one, I'm going to go ahead and say I have a clear view. We don't have a mount. So we're going to continue with the kickstand. And it says plug in Starlink and router. Connect all of the cables and run power to the Starlink. The light on the front of your router will illuminate, and it did. My Starlink is powered. Okay, connect to Starlink Wi-Fi, open settings. So I'm going to connect to the Starlink Wi-Fi. It is an unsecured network right now. Go back to Starlink. Okay, we are connected to Starlink. Starlink paired successfully. Your phone is connected to Starlink. Next, let's get your Starlink connected to the internet and optimize your setup. So I'll continue. Okay, so it's determining my uh, alignment. Starlink found a satellite and is attempting to join the Starlink network. So it's still determining, a, uh, it's still determining the alignment. 
Adjustments may be necessary in a moment for best performance. Okay. I'm going to stop this for a little bit until this is done, just in case it takes too, a, a long time. So it says uh, getting there, or getting online. Okay, just it just switched over. Starlink is talking to satellite to determine which way it's pointing. Okay, so I might have to make an adjustment to the antenna. Okay, so we are offline. It said it could take up to 12 hours uh, to determine the best orientation. We do have some obstructions, so we may need to move the antenna a little bit further out. Um, I'm going to do that first. So that might help it. We're not, I'm not sure. Okay. Router not configured. So I'm going to go ahead and configure the router. I'll be right back with you once I do that. Okay, so I just entered uh, an SSID and a password. And now the Wi-Fi is reloading to apply our new network settings. And they're saying this is going to take about a minute. I don't think I'm going to be using this SID in in the long run, I'm probably going to use the WAN port or the LAN port that comes out of the back of the router and connect that directly into our PEP link. I can use the Wi-Fi if I wanted to, but the PEP link has a specific mode for the Starlink connection into the WAN of the router. So I, I want to utilize that because I feel that's going to be the best solution for us. And once it gets online, we'll see what, uh, what's next. Okay, so it looks like the Starlink has come online. It's only just been a few minutes. It's downloading an update for the router right now. Um, so once that's finished, we'll come back to you and we'll show you what we got. So we're at 98%. We're just about ready to get and 100%. So it's downloaded the update and we're online. And I'm just going to do a speed test real quick just to give you a sh <clears throat> an idea of what kind of speeds we're getting. I have no idea what we'll get. It looks like we got 18.5 megabits download and 10.6 megabits upload with 24 millisecond latency. It's not super fast. I've seen cellular faster than that, but I'll take it. Um, this does come, you know, you can, you can get this anywhere. It doesn't matter. We might see an improvement by checking for the obstructions and maybe realigning the antenna. So let's try the alignment. Let's see what that does. Okay, I think what I need to do, rotate your Starlink to match the outline. So I'm guessing that I'm gonna have to come over here and rotate it. Oh. So when I moved it to the left, it shifted. So what I need to do is I need to move it the other way. So I'm going to take and shift it. And as I shift it, you can see that the outline is different. And I'm not sure exactly what it's telling me to do here. Turn Starlink to match target. I'm not sure exactly what it wants me to do here. Oh, I see. Okay. We need to turn it 180 like that. Oh, and of course, need the kickstand down. All right. Looks like we're in the area. So I'm looking at... We'll just say done. And now let's run a speed test. Come back over here and sit down. 
But here's the area that we're pointing towards is right there. So you can see there's some pretty good obstru obstructions with those two trees there. We got a little bit of a gap in between. Let's see how that works. So we're gonna run another speed tester real quick and see what happens. Oh yeah, much, much better. Or at least it's looking better. So we got 51 megabits upload and 26 megabytes down, uh, sorry. We got 51 megabits download and 26 megabits upload with a 28 millisecond latency. I'm gonna run it one more time. Okay, now we're really screaming. So this time we got 200 megabits download and 12.9 megabits upload. I think that is fantastic. Let's take a look at the obstructions and it doesn't really seem to be a lot of obstructions here. I, I think over time that this will fill in. Yeah, because it's still gathering data on this obstructions. And they say this usually takes about an hour. So maybe we'll come back and look at it in an hour and see what that looks like then. Anyway, thanks for joining us for our Starlink setup. It was super easy. Um, all I had was that one little hook up there where I couldn't, f I thought I had put the wrong end of the cable into the dish. Um, but I was wrong. It was a ubiquitous type of connector. I could put it in the router or I could put it in the uh, antenna. It didn't matter which. So we'll be back in a little bit to give you an update on the obstructions. Thank you for joining us for that install um, of, the, of the Starlink. It was super, super easy. Um, I was a little bit confused about the cabling because it looked like the cable that I had uh, that I was going to plug into the router it looked like it wasn't going to fit and it looked like it was supposed to be outside because it had uh, the rubber, uh, I don't know what you call it, like gasket stuff material around it so that, you know, prevent water intrusion. Um, but that wasn't the case. The, the cable is ubiquitous. You can plug it in either side. It doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm still waiting for the data. Uh, for the obstructions uh, to fill in. It says it's going to take about an hour, but you saw the download speeds that were really fast and it was very impressive. Um, I'm going to do another speed test here a little bit later to see if that improves. Uh, they say with time as the Starlink gets accustomed to the satellite trajectories that that speeds and, uh, and the downloads and uploads can improve. Anyway, we'll check back in with you in a little bit. So as we were waiting for the Starlink uh, to fill in the obstructions, we started getting this, that it's searching for the satellite. Um, it's been searching for several minutes now. Um, I This is one of the things that you have to expect with Starlink is you do have uh, sometimes a dropout. Um, and because of that, that's why we also have the cellular. So the cellular at this point would be filling in. Um, I'll let you know how long it takes for the searching to actually find another satellite. Um, when that happens, we should see the online indicator come back on. So I just checked the alignment again, and it looks like it's a tiny bit off. Um, like I need to move it a little bit more down here at the bottom it's saying alignment uncertainty is high please wait a moment for an accurate measurement uh, most likely this is because we don't have a satellite signal right now so hopefully we'll soon find a, a satellite and this will come back online so we can check the alignment again well I guess we now know why um, it's not working 
according to the note that we have up here, we have a service outage. And it says our team is investigating and will resolve as soon as possible. So I did reboot the router just in case uh, sometimes rebooting the router fixes things like this. It did just go through an update, so I wanted to make sure that everything was fresh. Um, usually you don't have to do things like that, but I figured it might be prudent considering the circumstances. Anyway, so we got a service outage. Yay hey. Okay, it looks like we are back online. Uh, we're downloading another update. Uh, it's only 36% complete. So I'm not sure exactly what that means, but uh, hopefully it's a good thing. We still show a service outage that our team is investigating and will resolve as soon as possible message down below here, but it does seem to be doing something now. So I just finished the update and everything looks to be back online. I'm going to do another speed test, see if that works. So we do seem to be having still issues. Uh, there is no download. I'm going to run it again. It seems like the upload is working, but the download is not. Um, so I'm just going to give it a little bit more time. Maybe they'll resolve that issue too. Okay, guys. So I've got the Starlink connected to the PepLink. And let me just show you this right here. You can see right here it says connected via Starlink on the WAN. And all I did was I connected up the LAN port on the router to my WAN port on my PEP link. And I got speedtest.net ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to run a speed test real quick. See what we got. Looks like we got a solid thirty five megabytes download there. with a 22 megabytes of upload. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but all my other ports are disabled. So Verizon, T-Mobile is disabled, AT&T is disabled. These other guys are disabled as well. This is what we have our AT&T home on. Um, which is going to be going away in the future due to cost. So, and the only one that we got we're using right now is just the Starlink. Let's take another test at this. I want to see if it changes over time. I assume in that it will. Um, apparently that is true because <laughs> you can see we're already up to, uh, over a hundred megabits per second on the download. And even though we got uh, an upload speed of only 11.89 megabits, um, that's still a decent speed for doing what we need to do. And I don't see that we're going to have any issues uh, with, with uh, internet connection tomorrow. 
when I will be working from the RV. And I'm going to be working from the RV for three days. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Very exciting for me. Anyway, um, I'm going to make that a wrap on this. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. And continue to ride the wave. Talk to you later. Hey everyone, uh, it's been a few weeks now since we've installed our Starlink system. Um, we've been using it at a few campgrounds now and we are ready to tell you what we like and what we dislike about the Starlink. It's been quite an experience with Starlink. There have been some good times and not so good times and we are going to let you know what those all are. Go ahead and start, hon. So, we, what do we want to start with? Let's start with our dislikes. My biggest dislike about Starlink is that you need an open sky. Uh, we have found that even sometimes when there looks like you cannot get coverage, you can. Even with just a small opening in the sky, it seems to work rather well. There was only one exception to that, and that was when we were at Tippy Canoe. And at Tippy Canoe, we had many dropouts. I had to actually go to voice only in the Zoom calls that I was having because there were so many dropouts and I would freeze and other people would freeze and we found that dropping the video was the only way to really make it work the work well. Wow. Now we do have cellular as well but at Tippy Canoe the cellular there is very weak and even with two cellular carriers and a T-Mobile home cellular in the back we weren't able to keep a, a, a solid connection. So that was one bad thing. Well, that was probably because everybody and their mother in the campground was using. Well, not only that, but our signal was weak for cellular. So there's not, there's not very good cellular in that area. Ah, okay. Because I never thought we had a problem with it before. With the cellular? Yeah. The last time that we were down there, yes, we did. Well, that was the last time. I'm talking about previous times we've been down that, there. That was the previous time as well. We had, I had problems with, uh, with the connection then. Oh, you did. I didn't. Yeah. Well, I did. <laughs> yeah. So, I can't think of anything that I dislike about it, number one, because Mike is the one that sets it all up and makes sure that the Starlink dish, flat, whatever you want to call it, is pointed in the appropriate spot or towards the appropriate spot in, in the sky. So I really can't say what I dislike about it because Mike sets it all up. So honey, you take it away. So my second dislike is what Sherry was saying, the setup. The setup is a little, it's not super hard, it's not super easy. You do have to be aware of where you're at and where north is at because that's the direction that you want to point the antenna towards, the general direction. That being said, I still have to get out, get it all out of the box. I got to set it up outside. I got to come in. We got to plug in the router. We have to plug in the power supply to the router and then we have to plug in the antenna to the router. And then I have to plug in the R peplink router into the Starlink router and it's it's a little bit annoying having to do all that uh, especially if it's dark if we, sometimes we don't arrive to uh, our site until after the Sun has gone down um, usually we like to get here be well before sunset but now with fall creeping up on us the evening times are getting you know the dark is getting earlier and earlier so we're not arriving at our campsites at a time that is light or it's just it's actually twilight and we can still see for about maybe 15 minutes and that's dark yeah so it's just one added thing that we need to do for the setup and we're when we're working remote 
the last thing we want to be doing on the day that we're the morning that we're working remote is having to set up the Starlink and get it all plugged in and everything. Yeah. Especially me, because I start way earlier than he does. Yes. And the third thing that you dislike? The third thing, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good third thing. Oh, the third thing. We're always setting it out away from the RV. And that presents a possible opportunity for somebody to just come by and make it their own. And that is kind of unsettling. And usually the campgrounds that we stay at, the people are usually very honest, uh, not questionable. You know, you could probably trust just about everybody that's in there uh, to some extent. We have stated a couple places where it, it does seem kind of shady. You know, there might be some off characters or whatever. And then the security at the campsites, especially the public ones, are not, not the public ones, but the privately owned ones, are, are sometimes questionable. State campgrounds, they always have DNR driving around, they have gates, um, they have, you know, houses and everything. You just can't drive into the state campground whenever you want at night. But that being said, we haven't had any issues yet. So what about the things we like about it? You could start with that too. The things that I like. Oh, uh, one thing, our router, our Peplink router allows us to bind the cellular with the satellite. So we have all three connections. And if we can get T-Mobile, we have T-Mobile home router working we have four connections to the internet. The PEP link allows us to bind all those connections into a single bonded, what they call speed fusion cloud. And that has made a lot of difference in our internet access uh, from work. There's fewer dropouts. Even if the Starlink drops out and we got good cellular, the cellular will kick in and, and you don't even notice it. Um, I've done Zoom calls with no issues whatsoever. And every once in a while, you might see a little bit of glitch in the, in the uh, Zoom call. But anyway, um, it, it has changed our remote work for the better. I think so. And when I'm working remote from the motorhome here, um, with everything working at top capacity, I have no complaints because everything is quick, everything is easy. Um, there's a lot of times that I have something that I have to take care of in a very timely manner and it's almost immediate that I have to take care of it. And when there's only been that one time, I think, when we were at Tippy Canoe where it was very frustrating for me because I had to take care of some stuff and Mm -hmm. I kept getting dropped and then it would be maybe five, ten seconds before I get connected again. And I was getting frustrated because this particular responsibility that I have has to be done in a very timely manner. And aside from that, one time, I just, I love, I love the speed. I love the fact that I don't have interruptions except for the one time. And I can get my work done even faster as if I was in the office. Whereas prior, I was getting dropped off every now and then. Um, it was, for me, it was still kind of an issue and very frustrating because of some of the responsibilities that I have at my job that require uh, a timely response to. But right now, I'm loving every bit of it. Go I'm going to say number two, and we actually haven't really been able to experience this yet. But one of the one of the things that we want to do is we want to do some dispersed camping, probably out west. And out west, you don't have the tree cover, um, at least in the uh, you know like Arizona, um, A lot Utah, of the, the plain states. Yeah, the plain states and that, and. Even if you don't have cellular, Starlink can fill in that gap. Um, 
just about anywhere. And that's what excites me most about this, is that we can go anywhere, still have internet, and because we have solar on the roof, and we have a Blue Eddy, and we have a generator as well, we have enough power where we can stay in a location without any electricity for multiple days. We don't know exactly how long that would be, but we did stay in Lieber State Recreational Area for three days solid. It was Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. So three days and three nights. And we didn't have as much solar as we do now, but we only had to run the generator twice and that was for an hour at most each time. So we're we're really excited to to do some dispersed camping for sure. And hopefully we'll get to do that soon. Who knows? Yeah. But overall, you know, I agree with Mike. I'm excited with Starlink. I'm happy with the connection and how fast things are. Um I think there's only one time you had to go up on top of Puelena to put the Starlink uh what yeah, that? and that and time I that I went up on the roof, put it up on the roof, we were, the foliage was really, th really thick where we were at, but it seemed to be more open on the roof, and we were actually able to get fairly good satellite connection uh, that way. Yeah, that was in Kankakee State Park, wasn't it? You know, I don't remember where it was. I'm thinking it was because... Um... Yeah, it was. It was. It was in Kiki River State Park. Because where we were, it was a great spot. I love that spot. And I love that particular loop because I felt very private. Even though if you're, if you're coming down the road, you could see us at a certain point. But still, I, it felt, I liked it. And being able to utilize that one small area on top uh, accessing from the top of Puelena here, I mean, it was still great. I was still able to do my work and submit what I needed to submit in a very timely manner and whatnot. So I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited with it. I'm happy with it. So would I recommend it? Would you recommend it? We still got to go through our third leg. Oh, forgot and I, it. And I, and I, and I've got that one too. Yeah. Uh, Earlier, I told you about having to set up the router for the Starlink, you know, the, the actual Starlink router, the power supply, plug in the cable in there, and then plug in the cable from the router, the Starlink router, into the Peplink router. And that setup uh, requires electricity. Well, so the solution that I found was a power over Ethernet with the power supply. It was right about $100, but it will eliminate the need for the Starlink router and the Starlink power supply. And we'll be able to connect that power supply up to our house batteries. So we can run completely without any electricity uh, to run the Starlink system. The one downside to that is that the Starlink does have a built-in heater. And that heater turns on when it gets cold, so it will melt the snow and the ice that might accumulate on it. Now, hopefully we won't be in those situations. We'll always be where it's warm, but you never know. Or clear and cold. And by the way, there will be a video when I do this install for the uh, power over ethernet for the Starlink. And I'll show you exactly how to do that and make it work for you. Now, what exactly is a pep link? Because some people might be wondering, what's the difference between a router and a pep link router? Okay, well, the major difference between a regular router that you might put in your house uh, and a pep link router, a pep link router is um, built for the mobile application, such as RVs or maybe a UPS truck or whatever. It's more durable. It's built really, really heavy. It weighs quite a bit. Um, it actually feels like a brick when you pick it up. And it allows us also to uh, bond multiple cellular carriers. And that's the big thing about the uh, PEPLINK is it does provide you with a cellular 
connection to the internet. And you can buy different models of the Peplink. I forget which one we have. I'll put uh, something here that says you tells you what model that we have. It'll be down here at the bottom somewhere. <laughs> and there's, there's a multitude of features that you have with the Peplink uh, that I really like. One is, of course, the ability to have multiple SIMs. So we have an AT&T SIM, and we have a T-Mobile SIM, and we have a Verizon SIM. Now, the Verizon SIM shares the same cellular modem as the as T-Mobile. The and the T-Mobile is a standby in case something happens to the Verizon. Like if the Verizon is totally offline and dead, it'll try to pick up the uh, T-Mobile. The T-Mobile uses the, I think it's the 71 band. I'm, I can't remember exactly what that is. T, I want to say T71. Um, it's a special frequency. It's a lower frequency than the 5G. Um, now, is that T-Mobile that we have, what you were talking about, is like the T-Mobile Home Assist? That no, we have in the, the T-Mobile that... Home is t totally different than okay. the T-Mobile SIM. Well, I wasn't sure because yeah. I know we have T-Mobile hooked up in the back. Right. We do have T-Mobile Home hooked up in the back. And it just sits back there, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, the PepLink will use it if it's working, and it won't use it if it's not working. So we can have up to four cellular SIMs in this device. Two are the primary, and it will load balance between the two, and it'll also use the other two uh, as backups for the uh, for the primary two, if and when you maybe you run out of data on one sim, or say something happens physically to the sim and it no longer works, it'll switch to the backup automatically and continue uh, with your internet access. It's a great little modem. They are a little bit pricey. You're going to pay more for that if you if you want one of these. I advise that you uh, research it. We got ours from a company called Techno RV. They are very popular in the RV community, and they are really good at offering you assistance if, in fact, you if you need it. Well, anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing and setup. We did have some issues along the way of setting it up there for a little bit. We lost signal and then the signal came back, but we didn't have internet access. And Starlink said that they had an outage that they were working on. We haven't seen that again. So we don't know if it might have been something during the uh, process of upgrading the firmware uh, that caused it. Um, if it was local or if it was at actually the entire Starlink system. It could have been the Starlink system. It could have been the firmware upgrade. We don't know. Oh, can you access Starlink via your, your phone? Is there an app on your phone? Yeah, and that was earlier in this video. Oh, okay. That's good to know. All of this uh, techno babble is above my pay grade, so <laughs> I let him take care of it. Trust me. I'm a user. I am loving it. I, yeah, I I love Starlink far better than just the the phone apps that we've been using or the phone uh, AT and T and and the other Verizon um, other ways to utilize the internet. So I'm loving Starlink, and I would highly recommend it. I wanted to also give you some information on how much it cost. Now, sticker shock um, is definitely expected for this. The equipment itself was $599. That's for Starlink, right? Yes. For the Starlink equipment, it's $599. For the monthly service for Starlink in the mobile application, is $150. Now, the upside to that is that you can shut it off uh, for any month that you're not using it. And I, if you get Starlink, I highly advise that you do that. It's definitely, uh, and especially if you're just a, a, a seasonal camper, you will want to shut the Starlink off.
during those periods that you're not using your RV. Uh, I don't know that we'll do it because we like to camp all the way up through December and we usually take breaks during January and February and then March we're right back at it. Mm -hmm. So we might have two months that we're not going to be using Starlink. But you, you don't have to worry about uh, turning it on because the first time that you try to use it, you will get charged for that month. And billing starts on the 1st and ends on the 30th or the 31st. Whatever is the last day of the month. So that's wonderful news to know. Yeah. I don't think we've had to turn it off yet because we've been out quite a bit. And so you never know. We might not turn it off if we get the opportunity to travel in January and February where it's warmer and where there is no snow. Mm -hmm. We just may go ahead and turn it on for those two months that we generally are not uh, out camping because we're in the northern latitudes of the United States. And I've, I've been reading that there are some specials with Starlink equipment, but it's determined on where you physically live. Uh, <clears throat> so it might be something worthwhile to check into. So we hope that you've gleaned some information and that the information given to you in our Starlink video has been useful and helpful. If you have any questions, please leave comments, leave questions down below. We will get to them. And we really appreciate you watching our channel. If you like what you see, hit that thumbs up, hit that bell to get new notifications and uh, subscribe. Subscription is free. So thank you again for watching. We're going to continue to ride, ride the wave. wave on Island Time.